what the responsibilities of us as auditors and, and the council are in relation to the various things we have to we have to sign off and give an opinion on. And on the right hand side of, of page four uh, of, of the main audit conclusions, which again we discussed last time, on the qualified opinion on the accounts uh, and those of the Merseyside Pension Fund, and that first conclusion on uh, value for money, uh, but some uh, sort of acknowledgement that there were, there were the changes in place which were reflected in the financial resilience report that we took to the last committee meeting as well. Uh, and qualified opinion on the Home Government accounts. At the time of writing this report, the certification and completion of the audit was still outstanding, uh, as it says, pending the consideration of some matters. I've issued that um, certificate today because a number of those things have moved on. And there are various other bodies who are looking at elements of, uh, of the issues that were raised in the report that uh, I think the council uh, have sort of got in their possession in, in a draft form. But certainly acknowledgement of the improvement board uh, in session last week that there will be a response to those and they will be issued into the public domain once, once the matters are resolved. Some of those matters have been released and they can take quite a long time to deal with. And other elements of the matters within the report are with DCRG for On the basis there will probably not be a huge amount for us to comment on further uh, and there is some uh, identification in the council issue of potential contingent liabilities should the council have any um, have any financial recall uh, any financial refund to make uh, so the, the thing may well come back next year but as I say on the basis that it, most of the issues are out in the open and subject to uh, response to the recommendations and certificates have been issued in terms of certific certification of grant funds, the very last bullet point for the two major grant, grant funds, housing benefit and teachers' pension, both of those have a, uh, a certification date at the end of this week, and both of them are about to be certified in the next day or so, so we're not uh, anticipating any problems with the reports. On the page five, just some sort of high level sense of what happened last year in terms of the audit and where the council are and uh, some of the high level issues and making statements of which there were no major changes to the financial statements. Uh, and just an acknowledgement on the right hand side of that page of uh, the fact that we, we do appreciate the work that the finance officer and the other officer of the council do in response to the audit process. Uh, as difficult as it was last year, things aren't moving on the move forward and some of that is reflected in the other papers that uh, are on the agenda. So I was going to say a great deal more than that year, but the main just Point to the very back of the document where uh, Appendix A, which sets out the report issues and the fees, which are set by the Audit Commission and which are pretty much now fixed for this year in terms of uh, what we'll be charging for the audit, the grant certification, the pension fee, uh, and it flags up the independent review of the Big MIC Scheme Chapter 6 Committee asked for about a year ago today. I haven't taken a question.
attention is specifically drawn to section 2.2 of this report where all the items are included for your attention. The first item that all the items are
sort of like a morale, like a, a motivation, like a care about the service, or feeling uh, perhaps sometimes um, of, you know, well, where we're touching all the topics, I think that's what will happen. We've got 24 libraries, and I think the, the decisions have been made that those assets are vital assets, and the community have made an opinion about them. But at the same time, they have to be run extremely efficiently. Like every service that we have to justify what we do. And we are asking them to take on more and more. There's no reason why the library shouldn't be from the front line sort of uh, places where people do business and, and have trust in. So I'm just sort of saying that this has been investigated. If it's a general malaise or general lack of management or misunderstanding, because certainly you know, we are combining one stop shops with libraries. They are becoming full time, and if we've got friends of board, we better get, we better make sure we get every single penny for the value out of it um, for, for the future. So, so I, what I would like to do then on this committee is actually use the audit to put it in, in real level what, what, what's happening with the rest of the council. Likewise, in 2 2, the integration uh, director said one of the ways the council needs to be more efficient is a group of more people to do things like that with direct debit, the most you know, quickest, cheapest form of transaction. So in, if 100% of the population is debited by direct debit, there will be considerable savings. So when we have a direct debit system that undermines all the confidence in the council and how it delivers those systems, it makes a lot of that feel a little bit more in my head and says, come on, you know, we can't, we've got to be so spot on. We are actively, I hope, actively tempting people to use and address council services in the cheapest way to us, and therefore get the more services that are on the table. So I would like to look underneath the, the, the headlines of, you know, we've got a few made a mistake there. Some people have the, got 400 pound debit as opposed to 40 pound debit. Um, how many people will they have told that? How many people will they say, well, don't bring me that debit to the council? So my, my view is that you know the, these funds can't just be pushed over and say, oh, well, it's just you know my revenues can't manage money. Well, they have to if they want to make it for the council. Everybody has to manage money efficiently. And our job as the audit is to see those signals and ask some more safety questions about what, what's going on in the need. Um, you know, it might just be that one particular site. Um, and I'm not saying this now I'm picking on the library, but they're never picking on the library because my my idea. Uh, my passport, as I say, we're asking to become more frontline, more proactive. So we need to understand anything else. So I'm, I'm asking those questions. Maybe Mark might, might be asking one of the heads of service might be able to understand what's going on. Yeah. I think that's a bit helpful. Before we get Mark to reply, I would have picked up the same line, maybe from a different perspective. We talk about 19 recommendations for the line.
back to flat metal because it is an issue of aesthetic.